Hello. Let's start off with some prayer this morning. Father, we thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you for your mercy. God, we thank you because of your mercy. We are not consumed. Great is your faithfulness to us, Father. We bless you, Lord, for your mercy that it fails not. Thank you, Father, for new mercies every morning. Great is your faithfulness to us, God. Thank you, Lord, that you are with us. You are for us. You are mindful of us. We acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your grace. We acknowledge this day, Father, that you have given us. Father, I pray for those that will watch this live broadcast and those that will watch the replay. I pray for your grace upon their lives. I pray, Father, for their families, that they would know you in a very real and tangible way. I pray, Father, that you would get the glory out of their story. I pray, Father, for them this day that they will be empowered by this message that you have placed on the inside of me. I pray, Father, for power to deliver, power to uh, for the hearer to hear and listen and obey and receive empowerment for their journey. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, we invite you in to lead us and guide us into all truth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for those that will watch live and those that will watch the replay. As you come in, share this to your timeline, share it to your networks, share to your friends. I wanna invite you April 28th through the 29th to wow, 20 and 23, Women of Weight Conference. We have a beautiful time planned out. My team and I are fervently praying for the manifestation of the power of God, the will of God to manifest on this weekend. Women are coming from all over to be empowered, to be impacted by the will of God and the plan of God that will happen April 28th through the 29th in Deerfield, Illinois. We have virtual tickets and we have in-person tickets so that you can be in the place to be empowered and impacted by the word of God that not only myself, but others that are gathered with us that are joining in to impart what God has given them for this impactful weekend, Women of Weight, uncover your wow. So you wanna be in the place, April 28th through the 29th. You can find the information on my Facebook in the events tab. Or you can go on my website at www.touchdownsenterprise.com. Thank you guys for joining. Uh, thank you for, for uh, following, liking, sharing, comment, and inviting. Go ahead and share this to your timeline. Go ahead and share it to your networks and invite somebody on. So last time we were on here, what was that? Wednesday, <laughs> we were talking about the empowerment of the battle, being in the battle and understanding that the battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. The battle doesn't belong to you. You can't fight the battle alone. There are uh, weapons that you have to fight with. You have to know the who, what, when, where, why, and how. But there's one other thing that I wanted to address. I wanted to end it today with the knowing. When we're facing battles as believers, when we're walking by faith and not by sight, one of the key elements of coming out of any battle victorious, yes, you have to have the armor on, yes, you have to have a prayer life. Yes, you have to have the weapons. Yes, you not have to make a decision and know what side you're fighting on. You have to do all of those things that we mentioned on Wednesday. But I want to end, end this thing with the no. You have to know God. You have to know God in the midst of the battle. You have to know him in a very real and personal way to come out victorious. 
as I was meditating upon what I was going to share, um, the Lord just began to just unveil the knowing to me. He began to say that it is vital when we name the name of Christ, that when we face battles, we understand who he is in the midst of battle. We understand how to cooperate with him to come out victorious. We understand how to um, win, walk in newness, because the battle not only comes to um, increase you, but it comes to pull out the warrior on the inside of you. As I was sitting, what came to my mind is the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And one of the key things that they declared as they were going in the midst of a fiery furnace, it says, O king, live forever. Be it known unto you that our God is well able to deliver us from this fiery furnace that you are about to throw us in, this battle of a furnace, this battle of fire, this battle that we are waging because you want us to worship you and we refuse to bow down. He said, this battle doesn't belong to us, but it belongs to God. And we understand and know him to the degree that if he wants to deliver us, he's well able. We've seen him. We know him. We are intimate with his ways. So if he wants to deliver us, he is well able to carry that out. So in the midst of battle, we got to know what God is capable of. So today we're going to talk about the no. Type in the comments. I got to know. I got to know. I got to know what God is capable of. I have to know his ways. I have to know his actions. I have to know how he moves and how he responds. I have to know him. Moses knew the ways of God. Let me get that scripture for you. So Psalms 103, verse 7. He made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the children of Israel. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. So that got me to thinking about this no. What is it to know an individual? What is it to know God? How do we get to know him in a personal way? Moses became so invested in knowing God. Moses became so invested in walking with God to the degree that he wanted to know him and to know wasn't just in knowledge and understanding and what he could perceive with his mental capability. But Moses went to a deeper place of intimacy to know is not to be intellectually informed, but some abstract principle, but to be apprehended by an experience, a reality of something or someone. So Moses began to experience the reality of God. He began to experience the um, intimate details of God. He began to be informed about God's character. He began to see God's long suffering, God's patience. He just didn't see what God was doing as an out, as a, as a person sitting on the outside looking in, but Moses actually became acquainted with God. God knows us intimately. He knows our downsetting. He knows our uprising. He tells us that he knows our thoughts before we even think them. He knows the intimate details of our hearts. He is watching our lives and surveying our choices and our decisions. So God is so invested in us to the degree that um, 
He wants us also to be invested in him, to survey him, to know his ways, to know how he responds, to know his character, to know even his thoughts, to know even how he deals with humanity, his principles, his precepts, his laws. God wants us just like we're surveying, just like he's surveying us. God wants us to start taking inventory and start taking stock and recognizing his nature, acknowledging his presence, acknowledging the things that he does, asking for his input. He wants us to be deeply relational with him to the degree that we know his ways. We know his character. We know how he is mentally. We know his personality. We know the person of God. We just don't know what God does, right? But we actually walk with God to a degree that we know him. And Moses wanted to know God so intimately. He didn't just want a relational aspect with God, but he also wanted to see God. He wanted to see him in the physical realm. He wanted to experience God. And God said, I can't let you see me all. I can't let you see all of me, but what I'll do, I'll grant this request and I'll let you see my hinder part. I'll show you a a part of me. I'll show you an aspect of me because if I show you all my glory, you can't handle it in your physical nature. So Moses wanted to be so intimate with God that he just didn't want to stop, uh, stop at a relational level, but he wanted to see in the manifested physical realm, God in all of his splendor and all of his glory. So Moses even to the degree that he didn't want to move without God. He began to understand that God was so precious. He began to understand that he had to walk in a way that he did not go before God, but he was walking cooperative, walking and cooperation with God. He wasn't doing things as a rogue agent. Moses knew that if he had God with him, he would be successful. If he was obedient with God, he would come out victorious. So to know God is not just to understand what he does or how he acts or to see the manifestation of his hand, but Moses began to walk with God in such a way that he knew if his obedience to God was intact, he would receive the favor of God. He would receive the victory of God. He understood as much as he obeyed God's will, as much as he did what God said, God would perform. Moses understood that intimacy with God was not just knowledge of him, but taking in his character taking in his nature, reciprocating the faithfulness of God is something when you have a friend that you know that friend shows up for you. You know that friend is there when you call them. You know that friend is Johnny on the spot. What do you want to do? Because you know that that's your friend and that friend always shows up for you out of relationship. And because you know that friend and you know their heart, you want to then reciprocate who they have been to you. You want to be relational with that friend to the degree because I know if I called her, I know if I called him, they would show up for me. They would be here. So I'm going to move heaven and earth to be there for my friend. And so Moses began to know God in this way. If God, he knew God as faithful, Moses, Moses was going to be faithful. Friends, it's not just to know to see God's manifested power work in your life. So when you see his power come through, then you know that you have to come up because he's now shown you another aspect of himself and what we are to attend, uh, what we are uh, um, trying to attain is to be like God. We want to 
reciprocate the image of God. We want to walk in the expressed image of his person as Jesus Christ did. We want to follow that same pattern. We want to begin to know God, not only in the things that he does, not only in seeing him touch people in services, not only seeing him heal and do miraculous things, but we want to walk with God in such a way that we fear God. We respect God. God. We reverence God. We acknowledge God. We look to God. We understand God. We understand and we can perceive his ways. Just like the children of Israel say, look, King, live forever. But this battle doesn't belong to us. This battle belongs to the Lord. And should he desire to deliver us, we know his character. We know his ways and we know that he is well able to deliver us from your hand. And guess what happened? Out of that declaration, out of that battle, God sent the son of man in the midst of the fire and the uh, three Hebrew boys didn't even smell like smoke. So when you're facing your crisis, when you're facing your mental battles, you got to know who's with you. You have to know if he is with me, I come out victorious. He is with me. I win. He is with me. This thing is going to work out in my favor. The Bible says that all things work together for the good of them that love God, who are the called according to his purpose. So if I am the called, every battle that I face, everything that I fight, everything that I come up against, all I have to do is know him. All I have to do is get on my face and begin to cry out to the God who delivers, the God who performs, the God who works miracles. And should I not be delivered, I know that he is able. I know he is well able to deliver me. But on the case, if in case he chooses by his own choice to leave us here. I know that he has a plan for it. I know that this thing is going to work out in my favor. So to know is to not only have a carnal aspect of an individual, but it is a deep reality. I have a reality of God. I walk in the reality that he exists. I walk in a reality. He's not far removed from me. He's not a being up in heaven dictating. No, but he lives in me through the person of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit walks with me, comforts me, guides me, leads me. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the expressed image of the express person of Jesus Christ. So I am just not um, aware and have the knowledge of him, but I am intimate in relationship with him. And I am cooperating, walking alongside him to fulfill his agenda. So when I know God and I know his power, like Moses and the children of Israel, God began to deliver them from Egypt. And as God delivered, as Moses was obedient to the things that God says, he said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? I already told you where you're going. I've already told you what you're doing. We, you should know this by now. Moses, I gave you a weapon of choice. Lift up that staff and tell the children of Israel to go forward. Moses didn't have to wage war in that battle because God was doing it for him. God was causing the plagues. God caused the sea to split. All Moses had to do was cooperate with God because he began to understand if I do what he says, I'm coming out on top. If I do what he says, those that are following me as I follow him will see victory. As long as I do what he says, I'll obtain the promised land. But Moses got beside himself and Moses began to not do the things that God said. So one of the things that we have to do to maintain our posture 
and maintain our focus in transition. So many are in transition right now. And God wants you to know, just be obedient. Everything he says do, do it. If he said, write the book, write it. If he said, be kind, do it. If he said, obey me, obey. Whatever God has told you to do, that's the thing you want to do. Because when he is with you, you not only begin to see the acts of God, but you begin to see his ways. You begin to know his character. You begin to experience him in reality. You begin to experience him say, now this is what I'm getting ready to do next. And guess what happens? It manifests. He starts to talk with you. He starts to reveal his secrets unto you. He starts to tell you why he's doing the things that he's doing. He starts to explain things to you. You start to see his long suffering. You start to see his kindness. You start to see his love. He allows you to begin to legislate with him. You begin to make laws, spiritual laws and enact spiritual realities. You begin intercession and standing in the gap for others because you not only know what's in his hand, what he's doing transactionally, but you begin to see his character. You begin to say, no, 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 no. That's not like God. You begin to say, no, God doesn't treat people this way. No, I know him. I know how he's dealt with me. I've seen his hand of love. I experienced his reality of his goodness. The kindness of the Lord leads men to repentance. I know how he loves people because he challenged me to love that way. And it just doesn't look like that. It's not, it's not expressed this way. It's not. So when the enemy tries to present something false, when the enemy tries to present something that's not in alignment with his character, that's not in alignment with his ways, you then become one that can lead others in the direction of the Lord. You then become one that can lead others into the light of God. One of the things that I've come to understand about God, he does not deal with what's behind. Over and over again in scripture, he says, move forward. He told Moses, why are you crying unto me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. Then apostle Paul comes and says, I count not the things that I've been able to apprehend, but this one thing I do, I press towards, what does that mean? I'm moving forward. I'm going forward towards a prize. I'm going forward towards a mark. Um, I don't look behind me. I don't look in the rear view mirror. God is always moving us progressively forward. So if somebody wants to always deal with what's behind you, what's behind you has already happened. God is more interested in getting you to your destiny. God is more interested in dealing with what's before you, what's happening before me, what's prepared before me, what's laid out before me. This one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind. So be leery of what of people that will come and try to deal with the past, people that will come and try to deal with what's behind. We have to understand this. In the realm of the spirit, what's happened has already happened. What's happened in the natural has already been a spiritual reality. You were already attacked. You already lost that battle. But what do I do to move forward? What do I do to get to the end goal? What's before me? What's next, God? What's the next place of promotion? What's the next place of destiny? What's the next place of God is always telling you what's going to happen next. He's always telling you this is how we know God. He told the children of Israel what to expect next. This is going to happen next. This is, and he told them these things. Listen, before they happened. So God's character and God's ways, he's always bringing us forward. He's telling us foretelling. This is why we have prophecy. This is why we have the prophets because the prophets are going to warn you of 
warfare. The prophets are going to warn you if you truly belong to God. Now, we can get stuck in seasons. We can get stuck in bitterness. But what the Lord will do, he'll speak to that wound and he'll move you forward. He'll speak to that place that you're stuck in. And he'll say, now this is what you need to do to move forward. We have to be careful because demonic spirits will always try to pull us back. They'll always keep us in yesteryear. They'll always keep us in bondage of failure. They always want us to look back at Egypt. They always want us to dwell on Egypt. The children of Israel said this, Moses, were there not enough graves in Egypt that you would move us forward to die in the wilderness? They didn't know God like Moses knew God. They didn't experience God like Moses experienced God. All they were experiencing was the acts. They were just experiencing the deeds of God. They weren't obeying God. They were just obeying Moses. They were not intimate with God. They were not taking in the obedience and the dictate, the laws, the principles, the understanding and the reality of who God was. All they cared about was get us out of bondage. All they cared about was get us out of this place, Moses. So God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt but he also brought them into the wilderness to get Egypt out of them. So God wants to get that past failure out of you. God wants to get that failed marriage out of you. God wants to heal that wound. God wants to heal that broken place in order that you move forward. He wants to deal with the bitter roots of that church hurt. He wants to deal with the disappointment to move you forward. Type in the comments, move me forward, God. So when we're fighting battles, when we're up against financial crisis, what God wants to do, he don't want to deal with how you mismanage money. He wants to give you a plan, a strategy, a blueprint on how to get free. He wants to give you understanding of money so he can move you forward in your business. Come on. Type in the comments, move me forward, God. God wants to move you forward in ministry. God wants to tell you what's not working so you can get out of it. God wants to give you a blueprint and a strategy on how to win, how to walk in newness, how to walk in more of who you are you were called to be, how to walk in your God ordained identity before the foundations of the world. He doesn't want your ministry stuck and not experiencing the refreshing of the Lord. He doesn't want you to stay in that season of brokenness. He says, I want to move you forward. Tell the children of Israel to move forward. He says, stop crying over spilled milk. Stop crying because I've proven myself. Stop crying because I delivered you from Egypt's hand. I delivered you out of Pharaoh's grip. I delivered you out of the bondage and I'm moving you towards the place of promise. But you got to go through a season of detox. Type in the comments in order to get to the promise, in order to get to the place of victory. God has to detox us. We have to unlearn what we learned in Egypt and relearn what we need to take into the promised land. So God is taking the children of Israel through a detox in the wilderness, but they did not know God. When you don't know God, you suffer in the process. Even if God sends deliverance, even if God sends a, 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 a deliverer, somebody that with a prophetic word, somebody with prophetic strategy, a business plan, you have to be so mindful that you get in alignment with what God is saying and what God is doing and you move with God. 
type in the comments, I'm moving with God. You may have dropped the ball. You may have failed. You may have fumbled, but get right back up. Pick up that ball. Pick up that dream. Pick up that marriage. Pick up that child. Pick up that prayer life. Pick up that ministry and move forward. So what do I do? need to do to move forward? How do I need to get to the next place? God is always moving us forward. He's moving us forward. Type in the comments. I got to keep moving. So you got to keep moving. You got to keep growing. God wants us to grow from faith to faith and from glory to glory, from faith to faith and from glory to glory. Progression in the kingdom of God. It is progressive in the kingdom of God. It is growth in the kingdom of God. We see victory in the kingdom of God. We see revelation. We grow in revelation. We grow in understanding. We grow in favor. We grow in influence. And Moses said this to God, if I have found favor in your sight, teach me your ways. How do I gain favor? Type in the comments, I need favor. I need favor. I need favor. M Moses said this, if I have found favor in your sight, Lord, if I, if, if I found favor, teach me your ways. He gave God a, 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 a relational demand. There was a relational demand. Take me deeper. If I've been obedient to your word, if I've been obedient to come out and be the deliverer, if I've been obedient to step out with you, Father, teach me more about you. I want to know how you move. I want to anticipate your moves. I want to be like the sons of Issachar and discern the times and the seasons. I want to know if this is of you and this is not of you. I want to know. I want to anticipate you doing something. He's up to something. He's working something out for my good. What is he doing now? I want to have an inquiry of you. I want to be able to inquire of the Lord. So he says, if I found favor in your sight, favor comes by obedience. Favor comes by obedience. Type in the comments, just obey God. Just obey God, Sherry. Just obey God, Annie. Just obey God, Yolanda. That's all you have to do to obtain favor from God. All you have to do is obey the Bible says this, that, G, that Jesus grew in favor with God and man. So obedience to God grants you favor with him and he grants you favor with people. So when I want to know God's ways, my posture is like Mary said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Whatever direction he tells you to go in, go. Whatever he says to say, say it. Whatever he says, do. That's the thing that I want to be doing so that I can stay in right standing with God. So as Moses stayed in that right heart posture, he began to know the ways of God. He began to anticipate God's move. He began to see God. He began to understand if I obey, we come out victorious. If I do what he says, we are successful. He began to understand the correlation between obedience and victory. The uh, uh, correlation between obedience and manifest presence. When I obey God, I create an atmosphere of God's manifest glory, his manifest presence, and I don't want to move without him. I understand just how important it is to have God on board. I understand my uprising has to be God. I understand my downsetting has to be God. I understand when I make decisions, 
decisions, it has to be God because I don't want to do anything to disrupt God's spirit from walking with me and manifesting on my behalf. When you are one that knows God, when you walk with God in such a way that you begin to know him intimately, he begins to act on your behalf. He begins to cause plagues to happen. He begins to cause the Red Sea to part. He starts acting on your behalf. He starts fighting on your behalf when you know God. Type in the comments. I gotta know God. To know him is to obey him. To know him is to take him in intimately. To know him is to reciprocate his character, to reciprocate his personality, to reciprocate his friendship, to reciprocate his desires, to reciprocate his personality, his character, his ways, his laws, his statutes. When I know God, I take on his character. Evil communication corrupts good manner. But if I have good communication, then my communication becomes pleasant. My communication is effective. So when I always communicate with God, when I always stick around him, when I always think about him, my character then starts to change. My nature, the things I naturally do, my natural inclination starts to shift. And the thing that I used to do, I don't do anymore. The places that I used to go, I don't go anymore. Why? Because I know God. Type in the comments. I gotta know him. I gotta know him. I am desperate to know him. I am desperate to reciprocate who he has been. If you notice and you acknowledge the faithfulness of God, then your in your heart, in your spirit says, I got to be faithful too. If you've seen the deliverance of God, I got to make this deliverance count. I got to stay free. But when you only know the acts of God, you don't acknowledge what he's done. You don't acknowledge how he's moved. You don't attribute the things in your life to him. You don't attribute the little things in your life that manifest to God when you don't know his ways. When you know his ways, you say that was God. You don't attribute it to yourself. You don't attribute it to your job, your boss. You attribute favor with God and man to him. So when you become one that you know God, every battle you face, you come out victorious. Every war that you fight, you win. Come on. I got to know him. And so God wants us to walk with him, not to the degree that we know his deeds. We know his acts, but he wants us to become so intimate with him that we know his ways. We take in his character. We take in his nature. We reciprocate who he is. We don't want to move without him. We respect who he is, what he's done, and how he decides to move. I pray this empowerment bless you. I pray that you were stirred to want to walk with God to the degree that you want to know him in a very real, powerful, impactful, and tangible way. I pray that God's will be manifested in your life. I pray that God will lift you higher and move you forward. I pray for, that God will begin to give you the plan, the blueprint. I pray that God will give you the wisdom on how to win souls for him, how to change your uh, direction, how to get in alignment, how to bring your family up higher. I pray that God will begin to give you blueprints for your business, blueprints on how to move yourself forward to the destiny that he has called you to fulfill. Each one of us has a destiny to fulfill. Each one of us has a calling that God has placed upon our lives. And keep saying yes. Keep saying yes, keep obeying God, and God will fight for you. Thank you for joining Wild in Root. I pray that you were empowered. I pray that you are 
um, inspired to keep journeying to your destiny. Remember, April 28th through the 29th, Women of Weight Conference, Deerfield, Illinois. I pray that you are inspired and that the Lord would ignite you to join us online or in person, April 28th through the 29th. You can find um, information on my website, www.touchdownsenterprise.com, or you can find it in the events tab on my Facebook page, Women of Weight. I pray that you are blessed and inspired in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining me. See you next week, Wednesday and Friday. Be blessed.